Welcome back to the INFR After Hours. I am your host, Ryan Davis, where we just wrapped up performance number four, the second half of round number two. All right, I'm joined here with Bo Vasu, INFR president and INFR stock contractor as well, Tyson Cardinal with Bar C5 Rodeo. Fellas, we're going to go around number two. How are you feeling so far? I feel pretty good. I think the rodeo is going pretty good. Uh, we had some great rides this year. Um, it's probably our toughest bareback riding we've had in years. So, I mean, we had some big scores. I feel really good about it. Yeah, to hit on that bareback ride, and Tyson, last night I was talking to Steven DeWolf. We watched his ride back in slow motion. We saw you jump over the chutes to kind of help him out during that ride. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sometimes I black out and I just go do my thing. But I seen, uh, I tried to, I set my pickup man out there, and she didn't grab onto that pickup man, you know. So I, I know she kind of wants to turn back, and she was kind of looking at me a little bit, and I was trying to hoax her across there. And, uh, yeah, it worked out real good. She, you know, made the eight whistle, and it was good. Because I think a lot of people don't understand what goes into stock contracting, right? No, no, God, no. I People just think that they're these animals out in the back pens that come out and buck, but there's so much to it. There's right from the morning time, right from the, when they're getting loaded, the guys that are handling them, you know, you got to be gentle, you know, they're just not these, can't just ramrod these guys around because they get jacked up too and they get anxiety and they're they're so nervous about everything because they don't know what's going on, you know, and they don't know what you want out of them. And uh, <clears throat> right from loading and handling them in a shoot and the guy putting on that necktie, everything is, it, it's critical. In my point of view, it's super critical in how you handle them and just even the guy opening the gate and the guy heading them out and the way they pull their saddle and their rigging if they're going to be, you know, real tuggy on them and jerk them around and they don't like that and it's no different from your saddle horse you know right yeah and these contestants know these horses very well but they don't get to feed them every morning back home like you are no no they don't know their mannerisms no, you know they don't know you know and sometimes they get a little pissy with you here and there but i mean you go do it you know i know my boss Vern spent i don't even want to know how much amounts of money on this in this sport for people to get mad but we try so hard to please everybody you know um and the, yeah they don't know what goes on at home you know the, the buck starts at home is what i always tell everybody you know you got a crew at home right now feeding and it's crappy weather and it's cold and water bowls are freezing people don't see any of that you know what we do at home and fences are down and this and that but yeah no there's a lot there's a lot that goes on definitely eye-opening because you used to be a bronc rider yourself right i tried yeah how was it <laughs> how was the transition from Bronc riding to stock contract. Does it give you a little bit yeah, yeah, of appreciation? A, yeah, game changer, you know, because you go to these rodeos and you get mad if you got on a crappy horse, but then they all have bad days, you know. You can't just, uh, <clears throat> like us, you know, the, we all have a bad day. But then in the bucking horse world, if that horse has one bad day, man, they, they're not going to come get on him anymore. You know, he's he's not allowed, they're not allowed to do that for some reason, you know. But I've seen guys that... You know, boner leg a horse across the pen. We don't say nothing, you know. Oh, good good job, buddy, you know. Right. Our horse has one bad day, and we don't want to see him no more, you know. Because the common misconception is that you guys, the from the outside eye looking in, it's that the stock contractors want their horses and their bulls to do better. They want to buck these cowboys off. But to you guys, you guys want your horse to succeed with top-level talent, right? 100%. Like you guys are wanting to walk across that stage with those cowboys yeah, as well. Yeah, 100%. I want to be on that stage tonight. You know, I didn't get to be, but I want to be up there. You know, I want to go to the NFR, and I want to win Horse of the World. And But you can't. You have to have those guys ride them and score You know, throughout the year, you know. And at the finals, I mean, the best ride wins the buckle, right? And that's what we want. You know, you want 90-plus points. Yeah, and it was cool last night to see you jump over the fence because that's – I just wanted to talk to you after that. Yeah, because... well, I, I, I get a little jacked up, too, you know, and I cheer on my yeah. horses. And, you know, you probably see a lot of videos of me when I'm flanking horses. You, I'll be jumping out there and sometimes, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? But I'll be you know, clapping right. and you know, I'm cheering for the horse. Well, because, <laughs> yeah, I, you hear cowboys saying, hey, what'd you draw tonight? What'd you draw tonight? But you also hear contractors saying, hey, who did what you did draw you, Yeah, what did you draw tonight? Right? Yeah, yeah, we're out the back pens talking about that, yeah. Yeah, 100%. it's awesome. That's cool. I bet you guys' eyes light up just the same as the Cowboys do. Oh, yeah, get a good matchup. 100%. Get your goosebumps rolling because, cool, yeah. I mean, up in the announcer stand, we get to talk about it for 30 seconds if we're lucky to build a ride, right? Yeah. But you guys, the draw comes out in the morning. You guys get all day anticipation yes. of that. It's like a 100%. kid at Christmas, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's pretty cool, yes. That's awesome. You talk about 
the bareback and the bronc riding horses. Bo, what does this year, what separates the 48th INFR from all the else, all the others, I guess? I think it's shished. Um, every year the finals has grown more and more. Uh, this is our 16th year here in Las Vegas. I remember when we first come here, we were, uh, it was pretty shaky. Our, it was new for all our crew. Um, we didn't have the, the uh, Indian stock contractors. We were still using a single contractor at that time. We didn't have the junior senior finals. Um, it was all new to us, new to the contestants, new to the South Point. You know, they didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And gradually, every year, the Indian National Finals has grown and grown. I mean, this place is packed with people. I mean, they come out, they love it. The South Point's um, made adjustments throughout the year to accommodate us. When we came here, there's probably two or three restaurants in this place. I think they have six or seven now. Wow. You know, we used to come here, they close the pool in September, and now they leave it open, and Sunday after the Indian National Finals is over, the, they close the pool. But <laughs> I, they, they just love our... Um, they love the, the family aspect of the Indian National Finals, and I think that's what we really bring. And it keeps us unique from all the other events. I mean, all the other uh, rodeo associations and stuff like that is, is how we continue to grow and still be family-oriented with our junior-senior finals, our open finals, you know, and the caliber of cowboys we bring. I mean, we bring the top contractors in the world you know i think we have four or five contractors going to the wrangler national finals this year um and we have a couple of our cowboys that'll be there as well and you know this is jacob lee's first year in the bareback riding here i think he's leading the average might have won around tonight and uh, it's just great that that we're starting to draw that caliber of cowboy you know people are out there looking at their their heritage you know and 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 coming back to Indian rodeo because it's grown so much. And I feel like in the past, to kind of build off of what you said, people see the INFR as a stepping stone, right? You go from here to the PRCA. Well, now we're getting the influx of Cowboys from the PRCA saying, hey, this is a coveted world title too. I yep. want a piece of this. I want to go back to my roots because the rodeo family is bigger than anything else on this planet. Indian country is unique in that way as well. It's all family oriented. You mix those two together, it really makes for something special. Folks, it's been a pleasure having the president of the INFR, Mr. Bo Vasu, and one of our highlighted stock contractors, Bar C5 Rodeo Tyson. Bo, thank you so much for being with us tonight. You bet. Thanks for having us. We're going to start it off and take a look at our bareback riding from night number two as we look back at the replay board. Taking the lead, the man, the myth, the legend, Jayco. Roper, 83 points on this absolutely snappy bareback horse. Everything shapes up for Jacob Roper when he needs to. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. In the fifth spot's going to be Earl Sosi Jr., 74 points. Stephen DeWolf, 74 as well. Stevens' traveling partner, Shane O'Connell, 75 points. Good enough for number three. And the two NFR talent, the pride of Indian country, Jacob Lee's 82 points. Moved to number one in the aggregate race with that 82-point score from tonight. And Jaco Roper with a go-round win, 83 points. Let's go to the big fellas event of the steer wrestling. I want to look at the winning run from tonight. Ty Great to Day see Chief. the level of talent and competition Absolutely comes out and smoke one over on the Tough Enough to Wear the Pink Night. to Las Vegas. Come on, Ty. Clean Give us our line, first time today. Yeah, yeah. You, they're taking these throws very very well. Let's look at the top five leaderboard after Ty J. Chief's winning run of a 4.35 seconds. Leaderboard top five is going to go Joe Wilson with a 5.09. In the fourth spot is going to be Matt Jody, 5.06. Rooster Yazzie, a name we've been wanting to hear in the pay window all week, 5.02 seconds. Ty Allen Fisher, the pride and joy of Northern Cheyenne Country, 4.91. And Ty Day Chief. We just watched it, 4.35 seconds. Now we go to the breakaway roping, where I am joined with world famous, not only in Indian country, but she's been taking the world by storm in the fastest growing event in rodeo. This is D-Lo Show. How are you feeling, D-Lo? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. You enjoying your INFR trip this year? Yeah, you know, it's been a different trip for me just because I made it in the team roping, but, you know, it's been fun. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk a little bit about that, real, just real quick. 
you made it in the breakaway rope, and everybody kind of knows that that's your namesake, right? You've won just about everything you could this year in the breakaway rope, and you're going back to another national finals breakaway rope. And how does it feel to add another event? We Everybody knows you can team rope, right? But how does it feel to have that out there that you're not only just d show, the breakaway roper, but you're also one heck of a team roper? Um, I feel like, you know, out of the nine years that I qualified here, I've always tried to make the team rope. And then finally, you know, this year I had to drive 18 hours to Florida. And my goal was like at the beginning of the year, I was like, I'm going to win either one of these rodeos, win the breakaway, and I don't have to go anymore. So, you know, when that happened and then, you know, it all came to true life, I was like, wow, you know, I, I guess I deserve to be in the team roping. Yeah, no, I'm, you very much so <laughs> deserve to be here in both events, and I'm happy you made it. Yeah. Let's look at your breakaway open run from tonight. Walk me through what set you up for this great run. I guess I drew a little softer calf yesterday, and then tonight I kind of knew I the calf was – really good and you know was going to get out in front of me so um I really did you know put my horse toward the pin and I knew that shot was coming and I've um roped here and my arena record here is 1.7 in the same setup at the NFR so I'm shooting for 1.7 I'm expecting nothing less than that yesterday you were looking to be under two yeah we had a little bit tough luck got out a little bit early broke the barrier but it's not over till it's over. And if you're shooting your sights on 1.7, I bet all of my money that I brought to Vegas <laughs> that you're going to be under 1.7. Yeah, going to try. You know, I've been in this setup, so it's comfortable for me to, you know, just keep going after it. That's awesome. Yeah. We're really proud of you here in Indian country. We're looking for big things from you to continue to grow. It's just the beginning for you, and I feel that. I truly believe that, and I mean that. Is there anybody you want to thank tonight? Um, you know, I'd just like to thank my family for being here with me and, you know, the support, the fans, you know, everyone here putting on the international finals. I mean, years after years I've been here and it's just made me more, you know, um, competitive and humbled and just to be, you know, around this atmosphere of my family, our culture and stuff like that. Right. So people don't understand that the INFR, I guess they don't understand how competitive it is here. Like how many world champions have been formed in this INFR association. You know what I mean? Like there's just so many now. Yeah. You know, especially down in your parts yeah. of the country. Like you have got you guys, your region has produced I think more than any other region. Yeah. In the United States for world champs. Yep. And success stories that have gone on to the WPRA as well as the PRCA and D Lo, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Congratulations on an outstanding run tonight. Looking for 1.7 from you throughout the week. Thank you. Let's look at the breakaway open leaderboard from round number two. In the fifth place spot, Heather Rogers, 2.69. Faith Holion, 2 and 36. Good enough for four, like I said. Number three spot, Bailey Bates, 2.16. We just got the opportunity to talk with D. Low Show in a 2.03 second run. I got a feeling she's going to be going faster and faster throughout the week. Kelsey Benz was... The lady of the hour tonight. She's downstairs getting her buckle as I speak because of that 1.96 second run. Let's move to the classy man's event of the INFR, the saddle bronc riding, where the broncs have been highlighted all week long. We've talked about the bareback riding broncs. We talked with Tyson Cardinal, the Barcy 5 Rodeo, and we got a good pen of horses out. But tonight, the wind goes back to one man who was a part of a trifecta last night, splitting the go around three ways. But tonight, he was all alone, 82 points, Jackson Ford. You see him spurring one down, just absolutely gorgeous. To the fence, handled it with ease, flying dismounts, two hands up in the air. He's pumped about it. He has now covered two horses to set himself up very nicely in that aggregate race. With a go-around win tonight, splitting it last night, let's look at the leaderboard and see where we stood throughout the top five. Hunter Sapola. 74 points in the fifth place spot. Cash Deal, 77 points. He was one of the go-round winners last night. Creighton Curley, the tour champion, 77 points strong for number three. Cash Wilson split a go-round last night, 80 points yet again. But the man of the hour, we just watched it back, 82 points strong, Jackson Ford. Let's talk about the tie-down roping where the Cavs 
everything in the Time to Vent side of things, including Bovine Partners, is shaping up to be fast. And we just broke the nine-second barrier in round number two. Let's take a look back at it. Brock Belcom is the name I want you to be thinking about here. Gets one on fast, clean at the line, pulls a slack out of his rope, stacks him up, ties him tight. Look at the clock, 8.28 seconds for a go-round number two victory. Absolutely outstanding. Top five, Quinn Inman, 9.72 seconds. Eric Rogers, 9 and 7.2 to split fourth and fifth. RJ Straw, 9.17 seconds. Nolan Conway, back in action after a tough year last year. Putting it together in the tight end open with a 9.11. Good enough for money in this two spot. And the man of the hour, 8.28 seconds. The first run to break the nine-second barrier. He did it in under eight and a half. Brock Belcom, 8.28 seconds. Let's go to the team roping. The men who are two for two on go-round wins, Blaine Redhorse and Chance Hunter. Yet again, going to get it done in performance number four, round number two of the Indian National Finals Rodeo. As we take a look at the leaderboard in the fifth place spot, going to be Conway and Skunk Cap finally starting to put things together with a 5.18 second run. Boyd and Cole, 5.17, looking outstanding. Third place spot in a long reach on the head and side, Ty Vale. And his partner, Mr. Bearspaw, 4.98 seconds in the three spot. Rogers and Sinigini, very, very famous names that we all know, 4.91 seconds. But the man who moved to the top of the aggregate race as well as the go-around win, Blaine Red Horse, Chance Hunter, 4.87 seconds. We're going to strike again. To the ladies' barrel racing where the story tonight was all about last year's junior world champion as well as open World champion from my home state of the 406, Miss Grayson O'Connor. As we take a look back at her run from today, absolutely cooking on barrel number one, tightens it up on barrel number two. Now we get moving to the fun part after the leg lift, barrel number three. Over and under, whipping and spurring all the way back to a 15.715. The story of the week has been the juniors. The young ladies who are competing in the open division, Grace and O'Connor, I talked about it last year, won the junior world title, and then that night on Saturday won the open division as well. Quinn Leanman has been the story of the week as well as we look at the top five leaderboard from go round number two. Kelsey Howard, 15.924. Quinn Leanman, 15.919. Kenzie Kallenberger, 15 and 825. Sonia Dodgen Horse with that 15 and 794, good enough for the two spot. And we just saw it, Grace and O'Connor. Reigning world champion, 15.715. Let's talk about the bull riding where we had a go-round split tonight. A pair of 81-point bull rides was the way of the tape. Vanel Mariano, 81 points on White Boy Rick of Jones Bucking Bulls. And Jacoy Hale, reigning world champion on Seek the Freak of Fitzpatrick Ranch. We're going to watch Jacoy Hale. Zeke the Freak absolutely crushing it around the corner into his hand. We had a lot of bull riders come off today when bulls were spinning into their hand, but Jacoy Hale, reigning world champ, fresh off the UTB tour as well as a PBR Teams event, was all in the money. You see the iron flying as we go to the top five. Tegan Gray, 71 points in the fifth place spot. O'Day Tom with a 77-point bull ride. Taj Wells, the youngster, reigning state high school champion in Montana, 80 points. Vanel Mariano, 81 points strong, and Jacoy Hale going to split the go-round lead with Vanel Mariano in a pair of 81-point bull rides. Thank you for everybody watching and following along in the Indian National Finals Rodeo page on YouTube. This has been INFR After Hours with your host, Ryan Davis. We're looking forward to round number three, and we're just getting warmed up here in Vegas. If you're not down here, get down here. And if you're not able to come, please keep following along. Stay classy, Indian country.